Welcome to The Ladder, a weekly dose of personal development ideas to help spark your imagination, increase your leadership skills, and bring more success into your life. And now, here's your host, James Ferris. Welcome again to another episode of The Ladder Podcast. I am your host, James Theris, and we're going to jump right into things today. We're going to talk about personalities, personality types. Do you know what your dominant personality type is? If the answer is no, I suggest you learn about it as quickly as possible because that can be something that can be holding you back and you not even know it. Certain personality types are better suited for certain types of work and some some of them are better as entrepreneurs and some of them are better as employees so it's important to remember remember that because there it might be if you're listening to this and you've been skipping from job to job to job to job and not feeling any satisfaction or happiness it could be because you're looking in the wrong places so it's important that we get a, a kind of a, a handle on what our personality type or our dominant personality type is because we're probably going to find ourselves in a little bit a little bit of all of it within us and we can we can uh, relate to a lot of it but we're probably going to find one of them that really you know sing, uh, you know rises to the top a little bit and I'm going to give you two book recommendations to help you get started on this although you can find some uh, some free personality uh, quizzes and things online uh, you can find some free ones, you can find some paid ones, and you can get very detailed if you'd like to with some of the paid ones and learn a lot about yourself that you may not already know. And that may solve some some uh, problems with you and, and some of your social interactions with your siblings, your parents, your teachers, uh, your spouse, your friends, your enemies, uh, your classmates and whatever else. So it's important that we get into these kind of things. So the, there's an, an author, her name was Florence Littauer, L-I-T-T-A-U-E-R, and the, her first book was called Dare to Dream, and it's called Beat the Odds and Win, Win Personal Success. This is probably available on Amazon somewhere in a used format. Great book, and it has a, a nice little section about the personality, uh, four personality types in there in a personality quiz. Or you can get another book of hers called Personality Plus, How to Understand Others by Understanding Yourself. And this one also features a personality profile test, and it describes each and every one of these personalities in full detail, and, and you will find which one of them you most relate with. So I'm just going to spend a few moments here, and I'm going to talk about the four personality types. The four personality types are called Sanguine, Phlegmatic, Choleric, and Melancholic. Now let's start with sanguine. Sanguines are typically your life of the party, social butterflies. They're often carefree and, and very talkative. Uh, you would find people that are actors, entertainers, dancers, singers would probably fall in the sanguine category as they're, they're looking for approval and looking to be the, the uh, center of attention. So some of the, uh, the traits of them is they, they find social interactions refreshing. They feel better when they're surrounded by many people, and, and they often are, are guilty of, of saying the phrase, that the more the merrier. Uh, they're always in, a, in a, good, a mood for a good time. They seem to make friends easily, and they, quickly are, they are very quick to forgive and forget. That is your sanguine. Uh, your phlegmatic, which is your introvert, your perfectionist, uh, these, kind of, these people kind of lean a little bit towards depression. And uh, I was looking for an example of one of these, but I, I guess I didn't find that. So anyway, uh, they take pleasure in being able to follow all the rules. They want others to be happy, and they tend to blame themselves a lot. They're extremely trustworthy. They will defer decisions to others when possible, and they prefer to spend a lot of time alone. So that's your phlegmatic. Uh, the next on the list is called a choleric. Uh, this would be people like Oprah Winfrey or our president, Donald Trump. They're, they're the leader in the group. They're strong-willed, they're quick-tempered, and often impatient. Uh, they're, they're known to be testosterone-dominant. They're very goal-oriented. They're, they're optimists. They're able to see the big picture, and they're what you would call a born leader. And then finally, you have your melancholics. These are your introverted, analytical, logical, uh, serious types. Uh, a great example of one of those would be Albert Einstein. So they are often reflective and deep. They dwell on the past. 
They're not fond of superficial things. They're often talented, creative, and or artistic, and they are usually the perfectionists of the group. So you may find some of these uh, in yourself, and you may find yourself recognizing uh, some of these things that are totally opposite of what you are. And what you'll probably discover is the things that you're opposite of, that's probably going to be the, the things that your spouse is, really identifies with very well. And that's where the old saying, opposites attract, comes from. Uh, it may not be a spouse. It could be just your, your best friend. You, you both have tendencies the other person doesn't have and you, you kind of complete each other. You fill in the gaps for the other person. Uh, the same thing with an employer and an employee. The, the top employee often uh, is, is many times is the phlegmatic or the melancholic where the, uh, the, the sanguine or choleric usually will be the leader in the, in the group and, and many times will be the person who's got the choleric as their strength, their personality. So those will be often oftentimes your generals, uh, your, your leaders, your, your your uh, CEOs and things like that that, that will uh, you know be able to lead groups and 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 paint the big picture for the the uh, employees and things and then your phlegmatics they're the ones that are going to really be a great uh, complement to the the choleric because they're able to take pleasure in being able to follow the rules and they are very trustworthy and they love to de defer to decisions defer decisions to others when possible meaning maybe they would defer their decisions to their boss versus trying to interject and get the the boss to see it see things their way uh, where the the sanguines they're, they're the social butterflies those might be the people on the front line of the business the the cash cashier or the hostess or uh, you know somebody that's going to interact with people in crowds and and be able to to have social interactions with them where a lot of times the clerics which are the the owners they may be a little bit less uh, skilled in those particular departments because they see the big picture and they're, they're often on, on uh, they're looking at goals and, and deadlines and things and they may you know come off as kind of rough around the edges once in a while. Uh, so it's good to find out where you fit in these personality types. And those books that I mentioned uh, from Florence Litauer, Dare to Dream and Personality Plus, Plus are a great place to start for you to find a kind of find out uh, a little bit more about yourself and it, it gives you these little uh, personality quizzes in here that uh, let me see if I can find one of them here and it's a, it's a really kind of a neat uh, process of going through this uh, let's see I think it, this, in this book it might be toward the end I apologize for that I should have had that better prepared but uh, well, see, I, I know exactly where it's at in this other book, and this is the Dare to Dream book. It's like in, right in the middle of the book, and uh, I had it open a little bit earlier, and it, it gives you, like, uh, it tells you your some strengths and some weaknesses, and it gives you four sets of these strengths and four sets of the weaknesses, and the one that, of course, that you check the most boxes off in, that's going to be, you're either going to find yourself as a more of a sanguine, a choleric, melancholic, or phlegmatic. So, for example, uh, in the strengths area, under sanguine, you would find animated, playful, sociable, convincing, and refreshing. Uh, under choleric, you'd find adventurous, persuasive, strong-willed, competitive, and resourceful. While under melancholy, you would find analytical, persistent, self-sacrificing, considerate, and respectful. And then under phlegmatic, you'd find adaptable, peaceful, submissive, controlled, and reserved. So somebody that's phlegmatic might be somebody like Gandhi that was very introverted, uh, kind of a, not, I wouldn't say introverted, but, but more uh, peaceful. Uh, somebody that's uh, maybe a Tai Chi master that's very relaxed all the time and, and very reserved and, and uh, you know, thinks about things on a, on a more you know deep level than, than somebody else would but, but again that might be describing somebody in the melancholy category as well uh, let's see some of the weaknesses here in the sanguine you'd find brassy undisciplined repetitious forgetful or interrupting uh, choleric you'd find for weaknesses bossy unsympathetic resistant very frank uh, or, or impatient melancholic would be bashful unforgiving resentful fussy or insecure, while phlegmatic would be blank, like blank as far as not showing any emotions, uh, unenthusiastic, reticent, fearful, or even indecisive. And so if you can find out which one of these personalities by taking this very quick quiz here of, uh, you know, a couple of pages here, you can find out then where you fit in there. And in the book, it talks about how a sanguine 
their strengths in, in their emotional area, their work area, and their friends area. And then they would do the same thing for choleric, uh, and then the same thing for the, the melancholic or the phlegmatic. And it also says that the sanguine is a popular person, right? The choleric is a powerful person. The melancholic is the perfect person, the perfectionist. And the phlegmatic would be your peaceful person. Um, and it shows the weaknesses for each of these. So let's look at uh, one of the weaknesses for the the sanguine in the emotional area. They say that the uh, weaknesses would be this is an, a, a compulsive talker. They exaggerate and elaborate. They dwell on trivia. Uh, they can't remember names. They scare others off. They're too happy for some people. Uh, they have restless energy. They are often egotistical. They bluster and complain and, and several other things. Whereas the melancholy's weakness is they remember the negatives. They're moody and depressed. They enjoy being hurt. Uh, they have false humility. And they're sometimes off in another world and they have a low self-image. Whereas the, the phlegmatic would be unenthusiastic, fearful and worried, indecisive. They avoid responsibility. They've got a quiet will of iron. They're often considered selfish. Uh, and self-righteous, and then your your uh, cholerics would be, I think I talked about that already, bossy, impatient, quick-tempered, can't relax, too impetuous, they enjoy controversy and arguments, and maybe you can find yourself in some of those descriptions, but until you do the actual work of, of discovering where you're at in the personality uh, realm, it's going to be very difficult for you to do anything about it and see just how you... Uh, fit in with other groups. So that's my message for you today, guys, and that's my call to action for you. Get online if you need to and find one of the free personality profiles, or you can pay for one that really goes in, in depth and, and learn a lot more about yourself, but it's very good to have an understanding of this. And then if you do this, I'd love to, to hear back your results, what you found out and what you discovered through this process. So until next week, this is James Theris saying, check out your personality. You might be surprised.